For the past five seasons, the TamFam team has been on the hunt for the most talented up-and-coming fashion designers from across the country. Each day this week, we've showcased one designer from our top five, and they've created some of the most incredible and innovative designs. The transformational dress from Evan Hirsch. She is looking like her Cinderella moment. She comes out as her pumpkin, and she turns into her beautiful ball gown. Rachel Stevens' modern take on classic styles using sustainable materials. It's all made out of upcycled material and then all of the plaid pieces are woven on a loom. Jada Ellis, elevating streetwear to new heights. It's a perfect mix of streetwear and couture. It is. This is showstopper. Jessica Mieko Foreman honoring her Japanese heritage. I hand embroidered and beaded this jacket with over 750 beads and a contemporary couture from today's designer, Shooks Collins. It says option friendly behind, being conscious of what we design and how our design affects the product. Now, they're all back for the finale and their chance to meet the ultimate fashion insiders. My mouth is on the floor. I cannot believe that this week happened. We are back with the designers Evan Hirsch, Rachel Stevens, Jada Ellis, Jessica Mieko, Foreman, and Chooks Collins all together. My friend, award-winning costume designer, creative director, the woman who never stops, can't stop, ultimate insider in everything fashion in this world, June Ambrose, is still with us. Now, full disclosure, in the commercial break, when June walked by, I saw Jessica's face. She's like, Oh, June's here. <laughs> June is here to give advice because let me tell you, if anyone has seen every facet of this industry, it is June Ambrose. She is just Absolutely. a survivor, a talent, an individual, great heart. But we've been keeping a secret from you. I know you knew June was here because I saw the commercial. You saw us advertising. I'm hard to hide. Week. Hard to hide in this hat. You can't <laughs> hide her in this hat. Well, one of the hottest designers right now wanted to celebrate you and your work. So what's better than one groundbreaking mentor, two groundbreaking oh mentors, and hang on, hang on. You still don't know who it is? Take a look. He's one of the most exciting names in American women's clothing, known for his bold colors, tailored suits, cinched waistline, and signature belts. The list of famous ladies who wear his unforgettable designs goes on and on. Kerry Washington, Blake Lively, Jennifer Lopez, his self-proclaimed muse, Kiki Palmer, and we can't forget the iconic looks on both the former First Lady, Michelle Obama, and Vice President Kamala Harris at the 2021 presidential inauguration. And even I'm known to rock some of his signature looks, including this September, during New York Fashion Week. Off the heels, off the heels of his stunning New York Fashion Week show, TFM, the one and only, the legend right now, Sergio Hudson! are taking my breath away. <laughs> Welcome. It was hard to keep you a secret. We oh, had a yeah. secret name. They kept saying Felix is in the building. I'm like, who is Felix? <laughs> that was your code name. Not long ago, up and coming designer, you were on a reality show hosted by Rihanna, and there you were looking at your future. That was 2013. 2013. Wow. Has it just gone so fast? Yeah, literally. <laughs> um, it's the 10th anniversary of doing that, and I just realized that, like, the other day, it feels like yesterday, yeah, for okay. sure. Time just kind of runs when you work in this industry and you look up and you're like, oh my God, like, what happened? What happened? Yeah. You see them, I mean, they're really in a spot that you were in, looking for that break, looking for people to recognize, and also, though, being resilient. They've all gone through different challenges, and life keeps life in, as Bevy Smith says. Absolutely. Yeah. And they are still standing. Yes. It's a hard industry to be in, and you have to have a deep love for it to continue sometimes. I always tell people it's like almost sometimes like a bad marriage. Like, <laughs> you can't leave it but because you love it so much, but you want to sometimes. I just can't quit your fashion. Yeah. I just can't quit your... 
Well, no divorces here. We're just going to go in for the long haul marriage here. <laughs> so first up, we know you're going to get advice from these two great minds. Evan, we have your first look. Let's take a look at your model one more time, the transformational dress. Here we go. My mother, after the show aired, my mother called, she goes, I don't know how he hid all of that color in there. <laughs> but you have a question. Here's your big chance. Evan, you've got Sergio and June here. What's your question? I'm in the presence of icons. <laughs> so my question is, my work borders on the costume design industry as well as the fashion design industry. How do those industries work together and how do they differ? You take that one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, costume design is about building the characters. There's a lot of theatrics involved. And then when you talk about design wear, ready to wear, but this is a couture piece for a special moment. You're really giving your customer an elevated reason to want to buy your product, which is a plus. Yeah. A convertible piece, I mean, I want this car. You know what I mean? It's like <laughs> women always want an upsell. Anybody investing in a piece like this yeah. know they're going to get more for their money. So well it. done. Oh, well done. So Sergio, what did you think of the transformation? I mean, there's so, I think what people don't realize, there's so many facets to this industry and it's a place for everybody mm -hmm. that has a creative eye. Don't box yourself into yeah. just cost. That, I think that's what we do in fashion. We box ourselves into mm -hmm. one thing so much and that you have to keep your mind open because the industry is already going to try to box you in. Yeah. You have to keep your mind open. Thank you so much, Sarah. <laughs> Rachel, we have your upcycled ski resort chic look. One of the things that Rachel talked about is really being sustainable, but also true to who she is. And I told her, my niece already called and said, Aunt Tamara, can I have this? This is amazing. Rachel, what's your question? I wanted to know when your career was really taking off and everything was going really well, what did you implement around you that kept all the momentum going? Ooh. Basically, I think when you were hot, how did you stay hot? Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't, you know, it's, it wasn't even a thought for me. Mm -hmm. um, you just continue to do the work and do it to the best of your ability. Because once the once the work starts coming, yeah. you if you do the the job that you have at hand to the best of your ability, you, you can't really think about how am I going to top the last thing because mm -hmm. that's going to shoot you in the foot. You have to really just focus mm -hmm. and say, I'm here. This is my moment. I'm going to show you exactly what I have. I love that. And June with Rachel. You know, she openly talked about taking a break for a minute and having to refine that focus. Yeah. Because she put so many hours to the point where her hands were hurting, cutting out the patterns, and she refound that focus in fashion. Yeah, and also just financial literacy and understanding, like, when, when you do make a garment and you make some money from it, don't go and spend it all in one place. You, gotta, you have to be the sunshine in those cloudy days and understanding the business aspect of it. Surround yourself around very smart people when it comes to business. And I know that... You have that, and that is a game changer. Well, when we come back, more with our mentors, the up and coming designers, Zex Plus. I have my own big reveal. It's not quite an Evan design, but you don't want to miss it. We'll be right back. <laughs> welcome back, welcome back. We are here with our Tamron Hall up and coming fashion designers. American women's wear designer, Sergio Hudson, award winning designer, and Award-winning, I can say award and award, because both of y'all got so many awards and accolades. Costume designer and creative director, June Ambrose, two of the most legendary people in fashion right now, two of the most relevant people in fashion right now, giving advice to our up-and-coming designers. June, before the break, Rachel was talking about who you surround yourself with, and it made me think about a quote that you had regarding um, going into business for yourself. You said it was the boldest thing that you can ever do is going into business for yourself. You're the CEOs of your lives. And you have to think about it that way as you build your business and your company. And everyone around you, everyone that you're, you know, that's within your zeitgeist, and I call it my universe. Mm -hmm. So create your own universes and make sure that you're aligning with the right stars. I love that. All right, Jada, you've aligned up with the right stars right here. Let's bring out Jada's red hot corset jeans, the blend of streetwear and couture. Jada. You're up with your question. Hey, y'all. <laughs> so, um, I've been doing custom couture for a few years, but I want to enter the 
ready to wear space. And so I want to start manufacturing pieces that sell for $500 to $1,700 a garment. So my question is, what key things should I have in place for my customer experience, my marketing, and my branding to ensure success for my high-end ready-to-wear line? Woo! Do you have like another day? <laughs> <laughs> so you was like, we have a whole day for this. <laughs> um, I think first things first, you should know exactly how much margins you're gonna build into your garments. And when I say margins, how much you're going to sell, because if you wanna go into retail, you have to have margins for wholesale. And a lot of times we go into the industry and we are already selling our garments and we're not putting enough. So if you know you wanna go into retail, you have to price your garments like you're going into retail, even if you aren't in retail. That's the biggest mistake that young designers make. And then they price themselves out of retail. So if and I'm- those chargebacks. Yeah. Oops, those chargebacks. So it's like you have to go in with your eyes open and know you have the vision. I want to be in stores. Mm -hmm. So I have to price myself like I'm going in stores, even if I'm just selling for myself. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest thing I can give you off top without having a dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And June, don't discount your social platforms. The fact that you can go live and sell your things now, you have a retail store at your, that you can build out yourself. You know, tap into your AI, you know, which is your authentic intelligence. Marry mm. that with, you know, artificial, you're destined for success. June is just dropping gems around here. <laughs> Next up, Jessica. Jessica's full-length coat embroidery and beading, futuristic technology inspired by her culture. This is beautiful. I asked Jessica, how long did it take to do the beating? She said, girl, I don't know, hours and hours and hours. <laughs> What's your question? Hey guys, thank you so much for being here. You both are huge inspirations. Um, my question for you is, if you guys could go back to the beginning of your journey in the fashion industry, what advice would you give your younger self? Oh. Ooh. <laughs> I'm always, <laughs> the funny thing is I'm always talking to my young self, asking for permission to be as brazen and bold and, and infinitely curious. I think your curiosity should never leave you. And those butterflies and nerves that you feel, that's like falling in love. And I know you fall in love with everything that you create, but that is really what's going to sustain you and drive you along the way. Oh. So, yeah. I think if I was talking to my young self, I would say, know that disappointment is coming, mm -hmm. expect it, but don't let it shake your belief in yourself because yeah. you have to believe <laughs> that team, that team um, that June was talking about, they're only gonna come and believe in you if you believe in yourself. You can't be shaky, you can't say, I don't know if I can do this. You can say that here, but you never mm -hmm. let that come out here. Oh. It's the only way Where's to make power? it. Yes. Yes. Oh. I, can, oh I feel like I'm looking at, they're like my babies and my babies are going to school right now. Oh my goodness. All right, last and of course not least, we have Chooks and his look that describes as the ode to the ocean. Oh, this is absolutely, and this was, by yeah, the way, Chooks' first entry into knitwear. Yeah. So this was the practice run. Thank you. Chooks, your question. As a sustainable designer who is very conscious of how my design affects the planet Earth and, you know, having stores knock on your door, what's the best way to pivot into retail high-end stores? Um, I think with retail right now, you're in a great time because the retailers, you know, the world has been holding them to the fire. So they come to you asking you, how are you being sustainable? So that's a great, you know, thing to have already going into the gate because I have buyers coming to me saying, how is this sustainable? Where are your fabrics coming from? How are you dyeing them? This is something the world has become a lot more conscious. So it's smart of you to have that already going in because they're expecting it now. So that's actually a selling point yeah. for designers, for young designers. I don't think a lot of people realize that because of course everybody isn't invited into those buying appointments, you know, cause it's very hard to get into those doors, but that's what they're asking for because that's what the world wants now. So, you know, you using that, just do it more. Do as much as you can. You've got the answer to what they're asking. Yeah. Absolutely. There you go. You're already doing it, right? Yeah. You have to be honest and realistic, too. You don't have to be 100% sustainable. You know, in the world that I live in, as long as you're giving a certain percentage of that, like the rest of the world is, mm -hmm. honesty is the best, you know, yeah. you know, uh, relationship you can ever have. And if you say to them, this is 30% sustainable, we're doing our best to continue to, you know, walk in that path, then that's enough. 
Don't let them distract you by, you know, telling you have to be 100% because that's not fair. Wow. Well, listen. I could not be more proud of you. When we launched this series um, five years ago, season one, I said this was a love letter to the people who I grew up who made clothes and they have their Vogue patterns underneath their sewing machine. Or you go in a closet and there is like folding, you know, folders with Vogue patterns tucked away. A lot of my clothes growing up were made because we didn't have the money to go into a store. So when it was time for prom, you know, the women at the church were battling over who's gonna make my prom dress. <laughs> And, and so this was meant to be a love letter to up-and-coming designers, to people like yourselves who are willing to live your authentic self, to fight back on the darkest days. And I know you've had challenges, but you're still standing and you are in the presence of two of the greatest and they all love what you created. So take that with you. Let's give it up for our up-and-coming fashion designers. Thank you to the one and only June Ann Please go to TamaronHallShow.com to get information on each of their designs, where they are creating their next collections, and go out 